The scouting update coming to Madden 22 has been delayed. We were expecting this to be dropping sometime in September, but now EA is saying mid-October is the new target for the scouting update. I'm not too surprised that this news came out as with the state the game released in, I felt like this was a possibility. There's a lot the game has to fix as far as bugs go, especially in franchise mode, and the scouting isn't ready yet apparently. But alongside the news that it's been delayed, they have given us the deep dive, giving us a lot more information than we had before on scouting. So now we have a better idea of what we're actually waiting for, and you can see if it's worth it to keep waiting if you have not yet started a more serious franchise you plan on playing long term. Because when this scouting update is out, if you want it in your franchise, you will need a new franchise file, and it will not work with an existing franchise but when we do finally have this scouting update which will likely be around two months after the initial game release it is going to provide a full scouting department in franchise mode in-depth scouting reports including player physicals traits and ratings news content that will move players up or down the media big board impacting draft stock Mock drafts providing a snapshot of who teams are interested in throughout the season. If you want to read this article, I will link it down below, but I'm going to go through the main points here and show you the screenshots from the article. Your scouting experience will begin during week one of the NFL regular season where you'll be introduced to the current draft class for the first time. Viewing the national region of the region breakdown map surfaces the identity of the current draft class. Being able to see the overall positional strengths and weaknesses of the draft class, as well as on a per region basis. That'll allow you to plan your approach so you can hire, fire, or reassign your scouts to make sure their strengths align with the region they're scouting. As an example here, they say that if the Southeast region has the strength of cornerback, then you want to make sure you assign the scouts that have the expertise in scouting corners. And you have five scouts, it looks like, to help you learn more about these players. They added a note, we listened to feedback from multiple groups of players. Many players wanted to be able to set it and forget it. Now you can set your scouts and move forward without penalty if you choose not to interact. There are some key dates to keep in mind when it comes to scouting. Week 1 is the final time to reassign, hire, or fire scouts. In week 2, you can assign those regional scouts to individual positions. And then in week 8, you can assign a national scout to individual positions. Week 11, choose 3 players to focus on where you'll unlock 30% of a player's profile. And then free agency stage three, you choose three players to host for private workouts where you unlock 40% of a player's profile. Each prospect has a key percentage unlock along the way. 1% gives you baseline physical information for prospects. 10% gives you player notes including traits, throw style, etc. Every 10%, one attribute is revealed on the skill tab as a letter grade. 70% gives you that player's archetype, and 100% all attributes in true talent range are revealed. In this article, they give you basically a mock season controlling the Lions and showing you what a season in scouting looks like. So this first screenshot we get here is the region map breakdown. And this is going to tell us the strengths and weaknesses of the draft class in the lower right hand corner. It's a good corner, defensive tackle, and quarterback class. Looks like it's weak along the O-line and at free safety. I do think that they should just look at combining some of these positions, by the way. Like, we don't need left guard and right guard separated. Just have tackle, guard, safety, corner, receiver. Simple stuff like that, I think, would be more accurate honestly the most important need there is probably just an edge defender role in franchise but anyway back to this screenshot looks like we have the national scout here and their tier positions they're focused on this scout kenny ramsey has a 10 percent efficiency boost when scouting quarterbacks and we can also see the top prospects here for the national region 
In this example, they assigned their best scout to the national region as they look for their next franchise quarterback. In this next screenshot, they assigned this scout, Rodney Harrison, to the southeast region. And even though he is focused on safeties, that's where the efficiency bonus is, he is scouting quarterbacks because of how strong quarterback is in this region. In week three, the first mock draft becomes available. So here's something new that we have here. The Lions projected to have the two top picks in the draft, projected to go get a wide receiver and a left tackle. On the right hand side you can see the completion the third player jeff shaw has 14 percent so you can see how scouted these players are for you and here is the top projected quarterback cade atkins who in this mock draft was set to be projected to go eighth and this is new here we have a scouting report so never seen a window he won't throw into beautiful spiral in all of his passes quick to throw at the slightest pressure knows when to throw the ball away, exclusively plays from the pocket, fast, violent, over-the-top throwing motion. So these notes are what you unlock when a player is 10% scouted, and this is going to give you an idea of their traits, and pretty much everything here will easily tell you what those traits are going to be. So you would assume that Kate Atkins has the tight spiral trait, that maybe senses pressure is paranoid, throw the ball away is going to be a yes, those traits then will be known. Having an idea of the throwing motion is pretty cool, and also it shows handedness under the player profile, so you'll know if you're getting one of the rare lefty quarterbacks. I do like the addition of the top fits spot, showing you what teams could be looking at this player as well, and then there are key ratings, and those are currently unknown. Next, we have a story where another quarterback is going to be working his way up the draft board. This is Zach Nash, and we get the draft story of him becoming the starting quarterback for UCF. Now, I do want to say I think that this stories page here in the news is overall a step back from where it was. And overall, I don't like this whole Nike Spark interface they introduced to the game this year. So we saw the previous quarterback's scouting report page. Here is Zach Nash, 50% scouted. This is the physicals page. So they have not yet gotten to the combine where you usually have to wait to know if a player has good speed, elite speed. But now we're getting an idea of those skills beforehand. So we're not wasting our time scouting players who don't have the athleticism we're looking for at certain positions. So there's good, there's great, there's solid. Looks like great is elite. What I do like also is they give you an idea of the quarterback's throw power and you should have that right away. So you're not guessing on that either. So I do think this is a solid step, better idea who a player is right away from a physical talent standpoint. And then the scouting further gives you the depth on the actual skills. Week 11 is the week where you're going to be choosing the three players that you want to unlock 30% of their profile. And in this situation, they chose the top left tackle, corner, and quarterback, Cade Atkins. So on this prospect screen, you can see who is favorited. You could also see the draft stock. In this case, Cade Atkins. He's up two into that number one spot. Zach Nash up 11 into the third quarterback spot. We have the projection round one. There's also a round one to two projection. And the talent range seems to be not as specific. Kate Atkins looks like solid round one. Kevin Ruiz two to three. Nash one to two. I didn't like how specific and how much they just spoon fed you the information with the previous scouting so I'm glad that this is a wider range. But they have now 100% scouted Kate Atkins and this skills tab gives you a letter grade for all of these ratings, A awareness, B break sack and so on. So from this report we could assume that Atkins, high awareness, peer pocket quarterback, Pretty solid arm, best accuracy to medium range, and then B for deep and short, C throw on the run, A throw under pressure. So you can assume he's a solid pocket passer quarterback. One thing I thought was interesting here, Kevin Ruiz is fully scouted 
and the talent is two to three. But in this screenshot where they focused on him specifically, obviously still 100% scouted, but now talent is in rounds three to four. So it looks like even when you have a player fully scouted as the season progresses, that talent grade may still change slightly. For Ruiz here, F awareness, A break sack, A throw accuracy deep and medium, but B short. I also like that they include the injury rating, so you have an idea of if a player is going to be injury prone. Moving on to the combine information, this is what we've seen in the past, what they did, where they rank at their position group, and then it's going to give you also that guide on the left there so acceleration is going to be elite you don't have to know that the three cone and 20 yard shuttle feed into the acceleration rating it just gives you that information and then there's also going to be college pro days and they have a note here saying that being able to view pro day and combine times to compare and contrast was feedback we heard from players so we're going to have it looks like two different results for each of these drills and that'll be interesting to see how that factors into the the scouting process in here i'm imagining you'll have some players whose times and results are very similar and so you'll have a better idea of their physical skills but then if there's a player who runs a much faster 40 then maybe there's a little more guessing in there which is kind of a cool dynamic i like that they share an example here that I wish they just showed instead, but there was a cornerback at the Combine who ran a 4-3-4-40 and a 6.773 cone, solidifying himself as a top 10 pick, and then one-upped his results at the Pro Day running 4-3 flat. So they hosted that player and a couple others for workouts, and then we go to the draft. With the number one pick, they ended up selecting quarterback Cade Atkins. We see the hidden development, of course, the athletic ratings. Overall, in the upper right hand of that part is uh, not shown here. So I wasn't sure if this was like a draft page or if this was something for the individual workouts that gave you a player's development, hidden or normal. First off, I don't think they should even give us hidden dev when a player is drafted you shouldn't even know a player has hidden dev until later in the season to me but i guess that's a conversation for another day next up they took bradley cherry and you know similar situation here hidden dev you got the athletic ratings there and that's all they gave us here for the screenshots I think it's enough to see that this scouting is going to be a lot more interesting than what we've had for the past like five or six years, however long it's been with this terrible scouting. I'm definitely looking forward to it. Looks like it's going to be a lot more interesting, but I won't know until I'm actually using the scouting if I think that it's tuned correctly as far as difficulty and if it feels like an enjoyable process throughout the season, it looks like it'll be a lot better. I like getting an idea of a player's physical abilities before you even begin scouting them. That information isn't really hard to come by. It's the actual football skills that take some time for scouting. And then I'm hoping there's also still like not enough exact information for all these players to where you're basically guaranteeing you never draft a bust. Like the way they spoon fed the talent grades in the previous versions it was easy obviously if you fully scout a player here we see what that looks like you know what you're going to get with a player but i'm hoping that for the players you don't fully scout that there's a little more intrigue as you consider drafting them similar to the experience in mlb the show and this scouting system does seem to be a bit inspired by that one so overall we're going to wait an extra month it looks like for the update we do not have a date all they say in this article is they're targeting mid-october do i think it's worth it to wait yes because the current scouting is terrible and you might as well wait and i still get questions a lot about if i'm doing a main franchise on this channel this year on madden 22 and it's not likely it wasn't likely to begin with now an extra month of waiting for the scouting update. 
I don't plan on doing a franchise on this channel. If the game blew me away on the gameplay front, then I probably would be considering it. But I'm not blown away by the gameplay. There's still a lot that needs to be worked on there. And I would rather work on MLB The Show franchise and some other stuff. So I'll still play a rebuild franchise on my second channel. And try to find some other series to work on. But I don't plan on following up the Broncos this year with an equivalent on Madden 22. Especially with the bugs that are currently in the game. And an extra month away from release. Giving me less time to work on the series. I'm really proud of the Broncos franchise I did. The help I had with draft classes and the sliders made that the best franchise I think I've done. And now I'm really more focused on building the best MLB The Show franchise I've done with the Colorado Rockies. So I know that'll be disappointing to many people, but time is limited and I got to spend it on what I think is most important. But that is where everything is here mid-September with Madden 22. Hope you all enjoyed today's video. Let me know down below what you think of the scouting. If you think this is worth the wait, if you think it's a solid step, or if there's a lot more that needs to be done. Please leave a like if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel. And have a great weekend, everybody.